So yes, it is. It is lovely to see you, by the way. So um, much. <laughs> yeah, very, very cool. What, what have you been up to today? Literally, like, just chilling this morning. Like, I haven't really done mm. anything. Like, I feel like today's the first day that I had kind of a chilled one. Like, I knew I had this today. So I just kind of like, I just didn't, I, I just didn't do anything. I felt like that yesterday. Yesterday was definitely my day off in terms yeah, of doing I, absolutely nothing. See, like normally I'm like up and out of bed at six and this morning I, I was like in bed at 7.30 and just like scrolling on my phone, like checking Instagram mm. and stuff. And I was like, yeah, oh. this, this is relaxing. <laughs> well, you're living the wildlife. It's really, really good to have you actually chat. Now, it's really weird because actually before we made this film like four weeks ago we didn't actually know each other which yeah. is really really cool and I, I still find that really bizarre i still find it bizarre that i haven't met anyone from this film like mm. when we guys do all like our production meetings on zoom and stuff yeah. like you guys have all got such a familiarity with each other and you know like you know each other's favorite drinks and all your like quirks and stuff and like when your birthdays mm. are and i've just kind of like entered into like this world like just been dropped in mm. and i'm like Hello, nice to meet you. I haven't even done knife yet, which is hilarious. But that's, that's the weirdest thing about it. It's like we've been making this film and it, it still kind of weirds me out a bit that none of us have actually ever met you before. It's yeah. really, our whole relationship is over Zoom, which is really yeah. strange. And I, like, I think me and um, Jack Evans were talking about this because we, we like WhatsApp pretty much every day now. And it's mm. kind of like weird. It's like we've got this friendship, but we've never mm. physically it's all just done digitally which is so yeah. bizarre but I think as well I've actually spoken to more new people since this mm. whole lockdown thing than I probably ever have in my life like because yeah. I feel like you're forced to be more kind of creative with um approaching things now I guess so you've got a lot to look forward to when you do set ready that's going, to be, that's going to be the, the biggest thing, is just talking to lots and lots of people. That's what I want to start with. So, you know, you, you're you joining Set Ready next year. Mm -hmm. And obviously, like you say, you know, the rest of us are all familiar with each other. We we all did it two years ago. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're experienced with the whole Nike experience. What are you, like, looking forward to about it when you, when you do it next year? I, I, it sounds really silly, but I almost feel like it's just to not be a figment of Zoom imagination. Like... It's the fact that it will suddenly feel very tangible and real because at the moment all of my experiences are done online and it's almost it almost feels like I'm catfishing myself because I haven't met anyone. Yeah. I'm trying to kind of like portray myself as naturally and like be authentic as I can. But in the back of my head, I'm always kind of like, well, people online aren't honest. Like how we are online is a construction of who we are. Um, if, if someone meets me I don't want them to have like a, a wrong impression of me or think oh she was really different on zoom or something like I'm trying to just be as I would in person but I think that's I think when you're dealing with online relationships it's very hard to not construct yourself in a certain manner so I, I feel like the thing that I'm looking forward to is actually just kind of getting to know people in a real and authentic way that's tangible a human way <laughs> yeah, a human way exactly not just like uh hi <laughs> hello online i always feel like when when you talk over zoom as well i always feel like it's like it's, it's not obviously but i feel like it's it sounds scripted do you know what i mean yeah you're waiting for the pauses and you don't quite know when they are like in a real conversation because there's not necessarily that lag of the internet or whatever you're talking mm. and it feels very natural whereas on zoom it's almost a bit like you talk wait a second I'll talk wait a sec so and sometimes there'll be that kind of crossover of you'll both try and talk at the same time because you didn't know that the other person wanted to say anything mm -hmm. so I feel like that sometimes it's a bit hard to have like a naturally flowing conversation because you're like oh 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 yep mm -hmm. no, go I'll go yeah, okay cool weird. it's weird because I think because set ready this year as I'm aware they did most of their um kind of online stuff Mm. And, you know over zoom um so it's obviously like you say it's very different to being in real life where you know kind of you're in yeah. a classroom um, or a lecture room and you're doing it face to face so it must have been very 
kind of difficult. I mean, when it comes to your one next year in April, we might just be coming out of this pandemic slowly. Yeah. So there might be more Fingers room crossed. to meet in public. Fingers crossed. Um, what made you get into it? Why, why knife of all things? Um, I honestly don't know. I want to say that I kind of applied on a whim um but mm. it was like a calculated whim I didn't just kind of go oh acting sounds fun like I think for me because I didn't go to drama school I went to fashion school and I'd always mm. really kind of missed out I felt or like I felt like I didn't have that connection to acting as much and I wanted to go into screen work from doing theatre my whole life I kind of was looking for something that was film related that I could do. So I was kind of looking at online courses or, um, you know, looking at schools that did just film and screen work rather than theatre work and stuff. So I, it's almost like I kind of stumbled across it at like the perfect opportunity. And I just kind of was like, oh, OK, I'll, I'll apply and just didn't really know what I was getting myself in for or what the process was going to be like or, you know, how it was going to end up. I just kind of did it and then it's kind of all it's almost like all unfolded very naturally and almost perfectly mm. um so yeah so I, there wasn't really like a a decision behind it there wasn't a moment where I thought oh I'm going to go and do National Youth Film Academy it was just it, it kind of appeared and I was like well the opportunity has come knocking I'm going to answer the door kind of thing yeah and I think what's really cool the way they've done it now is they've created this actors and filmic community that you guys yeah. can actually get in contact with people like ourselves who have done it before, people who yeah. are going to do it at the same time. You. So there is a bigger community for you to network before you even start, which is yeah. like, you know, something we, we didn't get when we did it. It was very, it was 10 days and you meet everyone on the first day and they're the people you're going to know between now and the end, of course. Yeah, of um, course. So it was a lot more intense, I think, back then. Mm. It seems a lot more kind of relaxed now. You can sort of go in slowly, start talking to a few people here and there yeah and I, I mean like I'm so grateful for it as well it's not it's not an opportunity that I don't realize or that I'm not blessed to have and I think that's why I've been so excited is because I've already had such a great start before even starting and I'm already in like a really positive mindset and a really positive headspace like I'm not nervous about anything I'm just happy mm -hmm. and I'm kind of like living in the moment whereas I feel like if I hadn't have done this project I maybe would have been a bit more cautious and nervous mm -hmm. and been like oh I'm a bit older than everyone else but it's funny because like when you obviously talk to other people and you say oh I'm 24 they're like oh that's not old but you do feel like a certain pressure um of what you should have achieved yeah. with acting um I feel like that is a constant pressure you know, because there are so many amazing, talented young performers and child actors and stuff who have done all these like big blockbusters and stuff. So it's like, mm. even if you just come out of drama school, you almost feel like you're behind. Um, and especially like not going to drama school, you're almost like, oh God, I'm starting at literally base camp. Yeah. Um, I've, and I've got to get up to Everest, you know, like whatever your goals are, whether it's like to get to the Oscars and blockbusters or whatever, you do definitely feel like, oh, I need to have this many credits or I need to have, you know, this level of film, mm. this caliber or I've worked with this type of director. There's, it's, it's a constant like noise of what you should and shouldn't be in, whether you should be typecast, or whether you shouldn't be typecast, whether you should be versatile, whether you should stick to it's there's so much noise around you and just constant stuff going on mm. that you really can't win. You have to just form your own path and think, right, okay, yeah. this is what you're gonna do. Absolutely. So where where did it all begin for you? Where when what was the age or what was the time in your life you thought, yes, this is what I want to do? I kind of feel like acting was this far off land, like Hollywood was just like this little silver glistening idea that only really happened if you were already rich and famous in some capacity, or you yeah. obviously in LA or whatever. It wasn't it wasn't accessible for like the regular people. And I, I come from Sussex, which has got so many amateur dramatic groups and there's so many like little local theatres and stuff around here. It was like the closest you would ever get to being an actor or a performer was to do Amdram. Mm. Um, there wasn't ever like, a, oh, you'll go on and you'll do this or you'll do that. It was literally like this. This is your career in the arts of 
acting and performing. When I first started acting, I was six, I remember, because I, I started dance classes at two. My mum was a dancer and I did, you know, the whole ballet, tap, jazz, modern, you know, all, all of the classes, character lessons and all mm. that. And I just wasn't as passionate about it as the other girls in my class. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I still love dancing now, but it wasn't the end goal for me. I didn't want to be a ballerina. I didn't want to, you know, be that Darcy Bustle that, you know, all the other girls did. And again, I just mm. threw myself into every after school drama club at school, every school play, every Amdram group that I could possibly do. But anything that I could get close to, that was what I did but again I just for me I was like where is the realistic route how can I get there it was just all so mysterious and almost like a secret you know other people I could see other people were doing it and other people are achieving it but no one wanted to tell anyone how they how they did it what their success story was or anything like that so I started by just doing a bit of extra work and talking to people that were doing screen work and thought right okay I'm just going to network my way in and I'm just going to work on building up small credits that just get me that little bit closer that little bit further than where I started mm. it started with things like student projects and going to I went to Bournemouth for a week and uh, shot this amazing short film which I was so so proud of and then I was doing you know small things where I was only in it for a scene and it was just it was just that anything that I could do was what I did so I kind of almost feel like NIFA was like a, another platform it was just like another level up of getting closer to the goal but in terms of like a moment in my childhood where I thought I want to be an actor I'll be perfectly honest it was I was about eight or nine I think when I first saw Titanic and I saw Kate Winslet doing all these stunts in the water and everything and I just thought wow well this is the hardest question for you now what's your favorite Kate Winslet film oh that is a hard I, I almost feel like I have to say Titanic just because of what it means to me. But I I really love her in Revolutionary Road. Yeah. Holiday, <laughs> it's like a Christmas classic. The miracle ever happened. Kate Wins that ever sees this video, we're big fans. <laughs> yeah. Right, let's talk about this film. Yeah. Um, <laughs> lovely, lovely little lockdown film. Uh, first of all, why this film of all films to get involved in? I kind of felt that well this is the weird thing when we first spoke on the phone it was already like we were best friends and like we knew we, we are that, so that, that five minute audition that turned into an hour's chat yeah so I feel like when I saw your post I was kind of like yeah this is someone that I feel like I could vibe with and really gel with because I'll be honest I'm not the biggest fan of groups but I feel like everyone that came into this production like the dynamic was so good we all just flowed and gelled there wasn't like that they don't like you and you don't like them and it's everyone just kind of got yeah. on it's like a really mature atmosphere but I think the thing that really pulled me to it was kind of your attitude of when you said you know I don't want to end 2020 without making a film and I was like yes. So you're playing the character of Amy quite yeah. a dominant role within the film so like what can you tell us about her? I love her honestly Amy is like she she's very much like me in some senses but then she's like the complete opposite of me in others and I feel like that middle ground of having like parts of you that you can really draw upon and then parts of you that is so much yeah. fun to play with like almost like an alter ego um I love that she's this science prodigy because that is so not me like I was not the scientist at school. I was the, obviously, the theatre kid. I was the dramatic, arty farty one. I love that she's actually a very vulnerable character. I think on the surface, you know, she's the leader of the group. She's the mum, as it were. You know, she's the one in charge who's kind of on it, as it were. Like, the people go to her for, you know, advice and trouble. But she's definitely a layered yeah. character. And I feel like that's really important because... I feel like there are a lot of two dimensional characters out there in the world and it's fun to play someone who's not just one stereotype or she, she's not just the smart person she's not just the mum of the group she's she's got this almost emotional barrier that needs to come down and I feel like that's really important for her in the journey of the film is releasing mm -hmm. that and trusting almost in herself to let go mm -hmm. and be, be with her own emotions 
rather than thinking of everything as like an equation that she has to solve as it were no that's really cool so what why why do you think you know people should get excited over this what what's there to look forward to in this film what's really interesting about this film in particular is yes it's a psychological thriller and yes there's you know elements of surprise and a bit of blood and it's it kind of meets the genre very nicely there's actually a real morality to this film and there's a lot of compassion and empathy and all of the characters are someone that you could identify with they're not just fictitious archetypes as it were but actually it's the internal emotional message that I think is really important about this film and that's why I'm so passionate about it. That's really cool so I mean, I mean what's amazing as well is that we made this film in four weeks as well yeah. which is you know pretty but if you actually think about it as well the the filming of all the scenes and stuff was really only done over a couple of days you know the first mm. kind of was all of the planning and the prep and kind of like meeting everyone and discussing things like nothing really got done in the first week but second week it was like this catapult of right we're going to film everything we're going to do all the sounds and stuff and now we're we're at the editing stage and it's in the post-production point which is like the oh it's so exciting can't wait for everything it's almost i can't believe i'm saying this but it's almost i would do this again yeah like, i would even after, even after the pandemic i would still make another online film yeah like in this structure because it works yeah it clearly works. I think if you if you have or you are thinking of making one and you're finding that it doesn't work i think it's either your team of people i feel like the team of people that you have need to be as dedicated and as organized as you and you need to have like a clear vision so yeah i would definitely 100 percent do another lockdown style project another online film 100 percent. yeah well ashley this has honestly been such an amazing chat today this is really thank you so much for having me thank you so much take care of yourself bye